Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to be here uh, at IIT Madras. Uh, once again, I want to uh, thank Dr. Ramamurthy, uh, Dr. Jagmohan Singh Raju, as well as um, Dr. Indu and the entire uh, Carbon Zero Challenge uh, team. We came up with this idea, I, I think it was December of 2015. So um, we're really excited to be partnering with IIT Madras and, and actually seeing uh, this project move forward um, with the launch um, of the website and the competition. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always pleased to collaborate with key players in renewable energy in South India. Um, as Indu mentioned, our uh, goal is to encourage um, young innovators to explore new clean energy ideas. And at the same time, they then become drivers of the economy. Um, I'm continually amazed um, by uh, the youth of India, and their creativity, their tech savvy, their entrepreneurial spirit, uh, their drive, and, and above all, I think their commitment to service. Um, whether devising technological innovations to serve the needs of their communities or making their voices heard about international issues, India is regarded around the world as home to some of the most groundbreaking young minds um, on the planet. Uh, and when Indian and American young minds come together, the result is really a world of possibility. Um, from the campuses of Silicon Valley to the tech parks of Chennai and Bangalore, from the innovation hubs in U.S. universities to institutes like IIT Madras, our countries have emerged as leaders in innovation and technology. And few can match the innovative, uh, and as I said before, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit of the Indian people. 15% uh, of the startups in Silicon Valley have been founded by Indians and Indian Americans, uh, which is a community that makes up just 1% of the U.S. population. For, so for that small percentage to have such, um, you know, uh, I guess influence um, on startups in, in an innovative and entrepreneurial uh, space like Silicon Valley is um, incredibly impressive um, and definitely one that's appreciated um, by the U.S. government. Um, I also think of people like uh, Sundar Pechai, uh, native of Chennai and now the CEO of Google, or Satya Nadella, who was born in Hyderabad and studied in Mangalore, um, as well as the University of Wisconsin, um, who now leads Microsoft. The history of discovery uh, is built upon the bravery of those women and men and young people who raised a question, launched an idea, or suggested a new way of looking at a problem that changed the world. Uh, an intellectual co collaboration propelled by an openness of mind and esteem for diversity has the power to change the very firmament of our planet, especially when it comes to renewable energy, which is a force that can transform not only the world that we live in in terms of uh, sustainability and environmental uh, stewardship, but also uh, can transform the global economy. Uh, accelerating the deployment of renewable energy will fuel economic growth, create new employment opportunities, and contribute to a climate-safe future. Advances in renewable energy technologies and growing cost competitiveness have strengthened the business case of renewables, and this has opened new opportunities for countries to transform their energy systems. Around the world, investments in renewables have ripple effects on the economy. Electricity prices go down in markets where renewables undercut alternatives. Lower prices free up disposable household incomes for other purchases. Now, current trajectory suggests that jobs in renewable energy will grow from 9.4 million in 2015 to 13.5 million in 2030. But that figure is projected to rise significantly more to 24.4 million in 2030 if the share of renewables is doubled. So you can see the, the urgency of the need to use renewables and the benefits of the need to use them, and hence why we're, we're working on this, on this challenge. Um, I recently saw a report by the International Renewable Energy Agency that stated that globally, among various renewable energy sectors, jobs in solar energy have seen the fastest growth since 2011. And Asia has harnessed this potential the most, uh, providing 60% of all renewable energy employment. And that's great news, and it's no surprise that the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs plans to double the capacity of solar power installed in dedicated solar parks. Uh, this will be done with the goal of creating a base of 100 gigawatts by 2022, and it will also create uh, additional jobs in that, in that field. And the United States and India have a long and successful strategic partnership in the energy sector. 
For example, the U.S. Agency for International Development, also known as USAID, uh, announced five new partnerships, four of which are with the government of India to expand U.S.-India cooperation on clean energy and environment. Uh, one of these is USAID's commitment to work with the Bangalore power utility BESCOM and US-based company Inovari to launch the first grid integration pilot under the Greening the Grid initiative. Uh, Greening the Grid would strengthen India's power grid to manage large-scale integration of renewable energy. And India aims to provide 24-7 power to all Indian households by 2020 by adding and integrating 175 gigawatts of renewable energy into the national grid. So by working together, we're hoping that we can help India meet that, meet that challenge and that goal. It's important that collaboration is happening at the government to government level, but public part participation is really important, and I would say not even important, it's vital as well. Um, and that's why I'm so excited about launching the Carbon Zero Challenge today. Uh, and I can't think of two better partners than the US and India uh, who are better poised to, to make this endeavor move forward. Um, we're two dynamic countries founded on a commitment to liberty of thought and speech. Two countries whose young citizens, think, thanks to the freedoms they enjoy, are charged with intellectual bravery and rigor. And we're two countries whose very different histories and traditions give rise to different perspectives on the world that are equally vital and mutually essential. And so uh, I think with this project and anything that comes of it, I think we're, we can all be proud of what's, what's to come. And I can't wait to see um, what our young people are going to do, and uh, working with both Indian and U.S. mentors, and, uh, and and where they can take us next. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Thank you for organizing the event. And uh, like uh, Dr. Ramamurthy, I, I can't wait to see what comes next. Thanks.